You only need a few simple ingredients to make bokasha, but it comes together into the most beautiful, soft and flavourful bread. Perfect to a side of soup, to have with a cheese platter or just to enjoy on its own. Welcome to Recipes by Karina, where I share with you how to make classic and simply delicious recipes. Make sure to subscribe or follow my page for a new recipe each week. Today I'm making olive oil and rosemary vacasha, which is pretty traditional, but if you do follow me on Instagram, you'll remember I shared a sweet chili version I had made. Vacasha is so versatile, so you can use anything you have in your cupboard to flavour it. Balsamic and caramelised onions, cherry tomatoes and olives, sweet chili sauce or just simply olive oil. All so delicious in their own way. To start we need to make the dough. You don't need a mixer or anything for this, a bowl is it. If you do have a mixer you can of course use it if you would prefer. Mix 2 teaspoons of yeast with 1 cup of warm water. Mix it and set to the side to activate. If you would like the full recipe for this focaccia, it will be on my website as well as the full measurements listed in the description box below. In a large bowl, measure out your flour. You'll need 3.5 cups or 450 grams. You'll notice I give the recipe amounts in metric and imperial, cups and grams, so no matter where you live in the world, you should find this recipe easy enough to follow. I'm using high grade or bread flour here. These are the same thing, just different names. It basically means it has a high protein content to develop more gluten. This is the ideal flour you should be using when you make any type of bread, but if you don't have any, you can substitute with all purpose or standard flour. Your bread just may not be as chewy and stretchy as if you had used high grade. To the flour we want to add 3 teaspoons of salt. Yes this is a lot but it is a lot of dough and we want to flavour it well. And of course the star ingredient of focaccia, olive oil. You'll just need a couple tablespoons in the dough at this point but make sure to have more on hand for adding later. Your yeast should only take 5-10 to 10 minutes to activate. You'll notice all the little granules have risen to the top and it's starting to get foamy. If this hasn't happened and you've used warm water, make sure to check the expiry date on your yeast. It usually lasts 6 months or so, so it may be out of date. Pour your foamy yeast mixture into the mixing bowl with the other ingredients and using a wooden spoon or if you're using a stand mixer, use the dough attachment and mix your dough until it starts to come together. It'll be really thick and cloppy, so when the wooden spoon is no longer really working, turn it out into a floured work surface and begin to knead. There's no wrong or right way to knead, some ways just may be more efficient, but the more you do it, the more you'll get the hang of it and it'll start to become natural. You basically want to fold the dough over itself and push it out. Fold it over itself and push it out. As you continue to do this, the dough will become softer and more elastic. This develops the gluten, which is what makes the texture of cake completely different than the texture of bread. It's pretty hard to get the hydration amount perfect, as all flours are different. So if you feel like it may need more water or a little more flour if it continues to stick to the work surface after you've kneaded it, you can add a small amount of either. I thought mine was looking too dry, but as I needed, it came together really well and ended up being just about perfect. You'll need to do this for about 10 minutes or so, or until the dough is soft, smooth and elastic. Take your bowl and pour in about a teaspoon of oil. Shape your dough into a ball and place it into the bowl, coating it well in the oil. Cover with a damp tea towel and leave to rise somewhere warm until it's doubled in size. This should take around an hour but could take anywhere from 45 minutes to 2 hours depending on the temperature. Just keep an eye on it. When your dough has doubled in size, take a baking sheet, the one I'm using is 35cm or 14 inches long, 
by 25 centimeters or 10 inches wide. When around this size works well, or if it's a little smaller, it's not an issue. Yours will just be a little thicker. Alternatively, you can break the dough in two and bake it into smaller trays or pie dishes, or cast iron pans work really well for this. Pour about two tablespoons of olive oil onto the base of your pan and top with the risen dough. Coat your fingers in the olive oil from the bowl and start to press the dough down, spreading it to the edges. It's not essential you get it right into the corners now, it may start to shrink back, but that's fine, we'll fix it up later. When you have it in somewhat of an even flat layer, cover it with a damp tea towel or plastic wrap and either leave it in a warm place for 45 minutes to an hour to rise the second time, or do what I'm doing and place it into the fridge overnight to bake up the next day. I enjoy slow rising in the fridge when I make dough as it gives it so much more flavour plus it's easier you don't need to keep checking on it. When you're ready to bake your dough preheat the oven to 200 degrees celsius or 400 degrees fahrenheit. Using your fingertips press over the entire dough making indentations right to the bottom of the tray. Make as many or as little as you would like. As you can see, I like it dimpled all over, but you may just want to make a handful of even marks. Now's not a time to skimp on the olive oil. We want about 3-4 to four tablespoons drizzled over the bread. You can measure it, but I usually just eyeball it. Now is also the time you can use any other toppings you would like. I suggested some earlier like olives and cherry tomatoes or sweet chilli sauce. The olive oil will fall into the little indentations of the bread. Follow with some fresh rosemary, pulling it off and scattering it over the bread. As this bakes, it will leave your kitchen with the most beautiful aroma. Finally, follow with some flaky salt, a good few pinches sprinkled over the entire dough. Place your focaccia into the oven for about 20 minutes or until it's risen up and starting to get golden brown on top. This focaccia is so versatile, eat it as is or cut into a few pieces to make the most amazing Italian style sandwich or even use it as a kind of focaccia pizza hybrid. So many options and so easy to make. I hope you try out this recipe, send me a photo on Instagram or Facebook and I'll add it to my recipe recreations album. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.